everyone, this is Ross. In today's video, we're gonna be once again looking at our young fig trees in containers. We're gonna be talking about how to train them, um, how to get them to the right form. And of course, that is all gonna then relate to not just them being aesthetically pleasing to the eye, but then having a higher production. I think this is really important to focus, uh, focus on this at a younger age. You know, once we get our trees to a bit, you know, probably like the third year when this wood really starts to harden up, it's gonna be a bit more difficult to really train this and get this in the direction that we want. So it's important to start now, right? When these trees are young, and we did a video very recently talking about what to do with our really young fig trees, like our, our one-year-old trees, or even younger than that. Maybe these, like, like this here, we rooted just this winter time. So, um, you know, what to do with our trees when we have them in a one gallon size pot and then up potting them into something larger. What are the steps that we wanna take? You guys can go back and watch that video. There's a few things I think that are really important. Things like fertilizer and just having them as a, a single stem trunk is gonna net you a more productive tree over the long haul. So, you know, go back and watch that. I strongly recommend it. But now we're gonna look in today's video at some of our older trees, like our two-year-old to three-year-old trees. What do I do at this point? Because inevitably, we wanna to get to something like this. And this is really not the prettiest tree at this point of the season. It looked a lot better before it lost some leaves, but this is my Col de Don Blanc, and it's in a 15 gallon size pot. You can see it's got nice form, right? It's nice symmetry. There's branches on all directions of the tree. It's covering a nice little area here. It's not encroaching too much, right? You don't have one branch that's off, you know, in, you know, East Jibip or something. Um, it's just I've got a really nice form and it's got the right amount of fruiting branches. This is what we're trying to achieve. We did a video actually on this particular tree a couple months ago and I was really happy with the form and how it looks, but it actually still has a bit to go. I mean, there's some improvements that can be made on this tree but inevitably the focus that we wanna put on this is having the right amount of fruiting branches for the you know, gallons of soil that you have in your container. And the, the really the rule of thumb is one fruiting branch per gallon of soil. So if this is a 15 gallon size pot, we can have up to 15 fruiting branches. And this is one right here, this is another, right? All these really thin or thinner brown branches, these are all the branches that just formed in the 2019 season. So these are all of my fruiting branches for this year. And you can see here's a nice little cluster of them on this side of the tree. Maybe this is too many in this area. Maybe we wanna fill in, let's say this gap of the tree here. So I'm gonna focus on that next year. And I'm also gonna focus on preserving a lot of these branches because we have already established such a great form that pruning this tree is gonna be very light. We're not gonna really put in a whole lot of pruning into this because it's already got that form. In fact, what I wanna do, rather than maybe taking out this branch over here, which is kind of in a weird spot, I may wanna keep this because the more branches we have, potentially the more productive our tree could be over the long run. There may come a situation where our tree becomes so root bound, it needs more water, it needs more soil, it needs more fertilizer, that we may actually need to renew this process. We may need to come in here and take out some of the older branches. You know, kind of keep this in the, in the right balance depending on how everything's going on down at the soil level. That's really important. But inevitably, what I'm trying to say here is that this tree is in a really good spot. I think there's some definitely some room for improvement but again all of our trees are kind of like that right if you look at bonsais they're the same way they're never really going to be perfect perfect but they're going to be at the point in which you could be happy with them and here's a tree that i want to show you guys in this particular video i want to show you guys the two or three year old trees now and talk about where they are at this point in the season and what they look like and what my objectives are with these trees. So you can see this is a Ponte Tresa, not really the best view here. So I'm gonna kinda, there we go, we're out of the, the sunlight there, but you can see there's a main trunk that comes up. It's actually staked, and we'll talk about that in a moment, but it, it really branches out nicely. We have a branch coming up this way, a branch coming out that way, and a branch behind the stake 
where this area is right here. This is basically setting us up for a really great form, right? We talked about getting them as a single stem trunk, letting them branch out at the height that we want. And now we have our scaffolds. We have our scaffolds for our main production. In terms of this tree right here, my Col de Nom Blanc, we have our main trunk here, and then a scaffold here, and a scaffold here, and a scaffold here. And then on this is the new fruiting permanent branches that go up, which then form this here, form this interesting structure here, form this interesting structure. So that's what we're focusing on, right? We've got ourselves those main branches and we got them where we want them, right? We don't have maybe two of them branching out in the same direction. We have one off in one section of the tree, another branching off in the other section, another branching off in the other section. You can be selective because when we pinch these trees, when we prune these trees, we can decide what branches we want to keep, right? If you come over here and look at this particular tree, this is an, a new Azores dark air layer that we did. And you can see it branched off here because we pinched it, it formed fruits, and it formed new branches. And it formed only two. It could have formed maybe potentially three new branches, but I said, you know what, let's only keep two. And then from here, we pinched it again, and it's gonna form more branching up in this direction. And we're gonna have ourselves a nice little form that way, right? And if we want, let's say in the in the spring when our trees are just waking up, we can come in here and select which of these new branches we wanna keep, right? And that's gonna set us up to have that right aesthetic form that's more productive. So that's one example of a two-year-old tree here, Ponte Tresa. It's not really putting out a whole lot of fruit. I mean, this is not really a variety that does that. Some varieties, however, can put out a lot of fruit at younger ages. Some varieties will grow a lot more, right? We need to find that balance of vigor. If we have the right amount of vigor in year two or year three, we can get ourselves quite a bit of fruit, but it doesn't always happen. And sometimes your objectives may be different because you may want to think about the future. When these young trees here, which are only a year old, you know, the objective here is to get as much growth as possible. Any excess fruit is gonna be a nice little bonus, right? And we talked about that in the prior video a few days ago as well. But if we have a variety, like I said, like Ponte Tresa, that's just not producing well younger, why not just let it grow anyway? Why not to give it a bit more fertilizer? Why not let it do its thing, right? Why don't we let it branch out continue to grow, get some size. Eventually the vigor is gonna slow down, likely next year. And I'm gonna be able to select the number of fruiting branches I think is appropriate. And we're gonna have ourselves really nice production. You know, production that looks like this. You know, where the figs are all up and down the branches. You know, and again, like this. Where the, the figs are just all over these branches. These, This is what looks like one, obviously productive genetics, but also, you know, the right form, right? This is not like some weird mistake or some random act, happy accident, as Bob Ross would say. You know, this is like, this is my doing. You know, this is the doing of the grower. So it's important to come in here and, and do this, this portion of what I'm talking about. Now, if I take you guys over to my Italian 258 tree, this is another tree I think is about the right age that I haven't really hacked away at it. This is another two-year-old tree here. And you can see down in here, if I get low, it comes up as a single stem trunk. And then we get the branching that we want. And it actually came out in four different scaffolds here, but this scaffold right here was so low and had lack, a lack of vigor that it didn't actually get as tall as these other branches here. But inevitably we have three main scaffolds. And what I need to do, because the stake is here, we need to bring this back over, attach it to the stake, and it's gonna have a, a much nicer aesthetic pleasing form, but also it's gonna take up less area in let's say this direction, right? Because we're gonna force the tree that way. Now I wanna talk about staking very quickly here, is that I, Jerry had mentioned in the video a couple of days ago that he wondered about staking, you know, when do I do it? How do I do it? Why do I do it? I think staking is extremely important with all of these trees, if, especially if you're gonna have them so close together like this. 
especially if you have a lot of wind. And my younger trees over here on the wall that I showed you guys are really well protected from the wind because you can see just these large trees up in here that are much older, they're creating a nice little windscreen. So the wind is not really affecting these young trees. And you know what else is that I can come in here, let's say, and when we up pot these, because inevitably they're not gonna stay in this five gallon size pot, they're gonna get up to this, this 10 gallon, this is a 20 gallon, you know, we're gonna get them in a larger size pot here. And what I can do is rotate let's say if the root ball is like this and the stem is going out like that and we want it this way, I can just simply rotate the root ball just slightly so that the stem going like that is now like this. And that's gonna be real simple when we up pot these things to correct that imbalance. Like I said, it's really difficult to bend wood like this. I mean, this is so thick and so old that it's just not gonna happen for you. So you gotta do this now if you're gonna be correcting this sometime in the year two or three. Otherwise, you're gonna be really kind of messed up from the beginning. You're gonna have to do some air layers to fix the form. It's gonna take you a lot longer to get to the right shape that you want um, because of your earlier mistakes. So it's important to do this now. And I think that's really the key there for Jerry and anyone else who's interested in that. But you can see again, we've got this scaffold system set up correctly. And on every scaffold is now two fruiting branches. Of course, this tree is a bit young, so it's a bit more vigorous. It's a bit less likely to fruit heavily. So we're not really worried about that. I kind of just want this thing to grow. These are all new branches, by the way. A lot of these scaffolds are brand new. This is a new scaffold down here. Even though this is completely brown and this is new growth over here, this thing grew all the way up to this point. We pinched it and it formed these new fruiting branches right here. Uh, so that's kind of what we're, we're focusing on is getting first off this main trunk, getting these scaffolds here. Once we have our scaffolds, then we let it branch out in hopefully a really um, advantageous direction. We're staking the trunk up. All this is growing in its own little separate area of the tree. It's not shading each other out. And additionally, once we, do, we come in here and we pinch, I took off a branch earlier and I took off a fig earlier, believe it or not. I knocked it off by accident. But you can see that we pinched this branch right in here. This is the location we pinched, and now it's forming a new bud, a new branch. It had also formed a fig at this location, and it formed a new branch at this location. Rather than having two branches, so more branches, I'm gonna limit the number of branches at this point, because we've already got you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then now here's eight. And this is on a young two-year-old Italian 258. Of course, definitely a more vigorous variety, a better grower than some of the other varieties. But what I wanna do here is actually take off some of this lower growth because I wanna have this tree branch out in the right way, right? I wanna focus on if this tree is like this, you know, give you guys a different view here. This section over here where my, hand, my fingers are, it's kind of empty, right? So inevitably, I want this branch to kind of branch out this way, or I want this branch here to kind of go in this direction. There's not really a whole lot I can necessarily do, but certainly if we already have branching and really good access or leaf area in this area, I want to limit that the number of those branches. Like this one down here, it just, it just doesn't make sense to have this. It's not really doing a whole lot for the tree and it's not gonna do a whole lot for the tree in the future. So rather than having many more branches, which you certainly could at this stage, you could have maybe 10 branches on this, right? I could have another branch, I could have two more branches over here for a total of nine, because we just got down to seven. Or I could keep this and we'd be at 10, you know, or I could keep something over here that I took off. You know, it's kind of up to you and you, you can get those branches thick enough and healthy enough and you'll have a good, form that way but i think personally i'd rather have fewer of these branches that's going to net us thicker healthier growth and i think overall our tree is going to be set up in the future better right it's all about the future with this we're not really thinking so short-sighted on 
oh, we gotta have production now. We gotta have the right form now. I'd rather have the right form sort of later, right? If that makes any sense. I'd rather have the number of fruiting branches that I'm trying to achieve, let's say, on this cold and on Blanc. I'd rather have that later than necessarily now. I'm trying to think about when I'm selecting this and growing this, almost two years ahead of time. You know, I know that's a bit difficult for some of us who are brand new at growing this, but certainly a year ahead, we should be thinking for sure, right? We need to think about, all right, well, if we're gonna keep this branch, we're gonna let this grow all the way up to about here, right? This is where we made our pruning cut. Because we made this pruning cut, now it's gonna branch out in three different directions, right? That's how we should be thinking about this. So when I made this cut, this was all in mind. Of course, maybe not all three of these, and I didn't know which one of these was going to leaf out, but I can come in here in the spring and say, okay, well, I like this branch, we kept it, we pruned it back, we took off the tip. By taking off the tip, we're gonna get all this new branching over here. Now I can say, all right, well, which one of these branches do I wanna keep, right? We have one on the right, one on the left, Let's take out the one in the middle and I can come in here early in the spring and I can even cut this back to here. But instead I decided, let's keep it. Let's see what it does. And you can actually see it's not very productive. There's no figs on this particular branch. So certainly there's definitely some room for improvement on this tree. Regardless of the pruning methods, you know, it is just a very troublesome variety here in my climate. But Nonetheless, this is what I'm, I'm thinking about. This is my thought processes that I wanna teach you guys about. So that's kind of really the, the key lessons here. And hopefully this kind of puts everything in perspective now for a lot of you guys. You know, this video I think really, you know, highlights the younger trees in a way. It highlights the trees that are about two or three years old. And then we've got the trees that are at full maturity at five or six. So we've also done videos just on this tree and we've done videos just on a few days ago on these really young one gallon size trees. So, you know, it's all up to you guys to do the research and figure this out for yourself. But, you know, I'm making it all available to you guys. So I wanna thank everybody again for watching this one. If you did enjoy this, please share it with somebody who you know is interested in growing figs. We have so many varieties here, so many figs that we're gonna be eating. It's just gonna be an absolute joy. I can't wait to share all the main crop varieties with you guys that are coming in very, very soon. You know, I would expect sometime August 1st, a lot of them are gonna start coming in as well as August 15th. The production is gonna be really crazy very soon, so. Thank you guys again for watching this one. I really do hope you learned something. We'll catch you all soon, all right? Take care.